Good morning, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us for our devotion today. As we gather, I wonder, what is it about Jesus that most amazes you? Is it one of the miracles? Is it his intervention to save against all odds? Perhaps it's the way that he speaks absolute truth and certainty while still embodying perfect invitation. It is undeniable that we have a God who defied and who will always defy our expectations. Time and time again, people expected Jesus to act in a certain way or to cast judgment on a specific people group, perhaps to uphold social and societal norms, but often we see the contrary. Jesus defied expectation and stretched societal norms and practices. Whether we look at Jesus and see the image as a successful, dignified, yet heartbroken father throwing pride away, hiking up his outer garment and running to meet his wayward son, a father doing everything in his power to welcome that sinful son. Or maybe we see an image of an all-powerful God, a God with legions, that is, thousands upon thousands of heavenly angels at his command, a God who would become like a mother hen, who with arms outstretched in a life-giving sacrifice suffered death in order to defeat it. Whatever image we see in Jesus, we know that he defies our expectations and he brings incredible invitation. That night in history was a night like no other, a night that would be remembered for all of history. There in that room was the very Son of God, the one who had mastery over all things, the one who performed miracle after miracle, who healed person after person, who brought wholeness to the marginalized, who cast out demons, and who calmed the very forces of nature. There he was, Jesus, stripping down and washing feet. Jesus, celebrating a life-giving supper of body and blood, of bread and wine. Jesus, embodying the only sacrifice that would defeat death and usher in eternal life. And there in that upper room, in that gathering, he spoke, he said, do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me, and my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I'm going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you may also be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. Hmm. Do not worry. Do not be troubled. Do not be anxious. That seems a whole lot easier said than done, doesn't it? After all, we're coming out of a global pandemic. Military conquest and aggression are on the rise. Inflation and rising costs of living are real, not to mention the strained family dynamics and failing relationships. Pressures of day-to-day -day life and health concerns are very real. If your life resembles mine at all, then there are lots of things that bring about anxiety and worry. Do not let your hearts be troubled, Jesus says. Trust in God and trust in me. Trust. The dictionary defines trust as a firm belief in the reliability, truth, ability, or strength of someone or something. The things of the past, the things that we can't control, that we hang on to, the things of the present that cause tightness in our chests, the things of the future that bring about anxiety are the very things that wage war on trust. I know this, often I'm anxious. When I'm anxious, the very thing that I'm anxious about is the thing that most of my attention is focused on. And it's a hard cycle because the more attention that I give it, the more it demands and the more helpless I feel. Jesus broke into all of this though. He broke into this life and has invested so much in you and I. He gave everything, even his very life for us. He is bigger and stronger and more reliable than anything that we would ever face. Do not worry. Another way of looking at it is see beyond your anxiety and look to the cross. 
there on that hill, on that Roman implement of torture, the reality of God's sacrifice was witnessed for all time and all eternity. It is there for you that Jesus breathed his last earthly breath and rose again. You, you have been chosen by God above everything. You've been chosen by the God who bears your concerns, your anxiety, your hurt, your failures, your triumphs, and even your celebrations. The cross, the cross that we focus on is a central part of human history. It links all of humanity with the Savior of the world. The cross is that tool that brings salvation to us because of the life-giving sacrifice of Jesus, who proved both his words and his truth on that third day as he rose back to life, leaving the tomb behind. Jesus, he is here, he is now, and he's alive. Cast your burdens, your anxieties, your fears on him. He does not, and he will not ever disappoint. I know this to be true now and always. In Jesus' name and for his sake, amen. Please pray with me. Father, against all odds, you came and you saved us. We thank you so much for the sacrifice of Jesus. Lord, certainly there are so many things that would cause us to be anxious and cause us to fear, but help us to hear those words. Do not be afraid, do not be anxious. Lord, in you there is nothing to fear. We ask that you would continue to send your spirit to us to work mightily in our lives, to help us to let go of the things that we need to let go of, to embolden in us trust in you. Thank you for all that you are, God, and all that you have done. Be with us now and always. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us, and we look forward to seeing you in person or online on Sunday.